Hello chess friends and welcome to the channel. We are back with new games from the semi-finals of the Clutch Chess International 2020. We will begin with Wesley So vs Karwan. Wesley So dominated day one of the semi-finals, 6 points to 2, but today Karwan began with two consecutive victories and the match was reopened. We are going to watch their game number 10 where Wesley So is still leading the match, but Caruana with the white pieces wants to win again to reduce the distance and to try and win in the final clutch games. Let's get started. Caruana with the white pieces opens with e4. Here comes c6, the Caro Khan. I can't remember many games where Wesley so played the Caro Khan. Now, of course, d4 and d5, knight to d2 instead of knight to c3. Is a variation very similar to this main line knight to c3 because uh, what is the idea? The, the idea is that if black will not capture and white will like to advance the e pawn, then without the knight on c3, white will also be able to reinforce the central structure playing c3 immediately. So, in my opinion, this is a very good idea. Knight to d2. But as they saw, he changes on e4, d captures, knight captures, and now bishop to f5, out of the pawn chain. The knight is under attack, knight back to g3, bishop back to g6, and here comes h4. This is the classical attack against the bishop that can't move away. So h6, played by Wesley saw to save the bishop, knight to f3, and now knight to d7, also controlling the important e5 square. Caruana continues with bishop to d3, so this bishop is under attack, bishop captures, queen captures, and now e6 opens this diagonal for the square bishop, also creating this structure that we know very well that is quite difficult to break. After e6, here comes bishop to d2, knight to f6, and long castle for white, this is the main continuation. Bishop to e7, king to b1, always a useful move with the queen away from this diagonal because there is uh, this dark square bishop. So preventing any exchange that uh, can favor black. And here comes short castle. Now let's stop for uh, one moment. In this position with the opposite casting, this h6 is a weakness. But unfortunately for white, these two knights in front of the pawn will slow down very much this king side attack so this position in practical play black scores better than white so why so played the opening very well after short castle for black now because these two knights are in front of the pawns caruana immediately moves one knight away knight to e4 knight captures queen captures and now knight to f6 comes with tempo Queen back to e2, there is the, um, the idea, of course, to move the other knight to e5, also to advance with g4. So here comes queen to d5, very good position for the queen. And what to play now? Here comes knight to e5, the same. There are two pawns that this queen can capture, but Wesley so will play another move, a better move. Now, let's watch what happens if... Queen captures on g2, not played by Wesley So. So this idea is bad, because watch this terrible geometry. Already, this rook to g1 is already better for white, because there is uh, this important fight with the bishop attacking h6. But after queen captures on g2, best move now for white is the immediate capture of the bishop on h6, that regains the pawn. Now, of course, black can't capture the bishop. Because opening the g5, rook in d goes to uh, g1, we win the queen. So now queen back to e4, bishop back to e3 with advantage for white. Let's go back to knight to e5 played by Caruana. Capturing this other pawn is not the greatest idea in the world, but it's a bit better. Because after queen capture on d4, there is the same, this bishop capture on h6. Now with the discovered attack against the queen. Queen to e4, queen capture, knight capture. This knight is threatening this terrible fork. Bishop back to e3 with an equal position, but in my opinion, white is a bit easier to play than, than black. Going back to our knight to e5, <laughs> instead of capturing, Wesley so plays the best idea, 
that is queen to e4, best move. Bishop to e3, I was preventing this queen's e change, and now knight to d5, attacking the bishop. The game is completely equal, black played well the opening. Here comes queen to d3, and finally this queen's e change. Queen capture, rook captures, knight captures on e3 to play the end game, bishop versus knight, looks like a good idea. Then we can say, let's go back one more. We, we can argue that probably before capturing, before he changing with the knight on the bishop, black can improve the position of his bishop, can also improve the position of the rook. But anyway, this knight capture is a good idea. Then the f-pawn recapture, and believe it or not, this is the critical moment of the game. What to do now for black? Now, as we said before, now because the rooks are the most powerful pieces on the board, the best idea is to improve the rooks and where to bring this rook to the semi-open file. So rook in f goes to d8 looks a natural way to uh, continue this game. Wesley so instead will not develop the rooks. He will play an idea that in theory is also correct, but in practice we lose one important tempo and it will be Caruana the first to activate the rooks with a threat that it's very difficult to answer. Let's go back to our game. We said this is the critical position. Wesley so instead of activating the rook to the defile continues with h5. The idea is to fix these uh, king side pawns on the, on the squares of the same color of the bishop. And the idea is correct. Unfortunately for Wesley, so Caruana continues with the only move that uh, gives white a good advantage. Rook to b3, attacking the weak pawn that can't advance because this pawn is protecting c6. Now, if black continues with the rook to b8, with this uh, very passive move, <laughs> White's advantage will be big, so what to re how, how to answer to, to this position? Wesley saw as the idea, because of course after rook to b8, it's not a simple win for white, but the position becomes really strong with this weak rook only in a passive defensive position. So in this position, Wesley saw idea is bishop to d6, to, so to lose this pawn but at least to try to hold the end game he changing the bishop on the knight doubling these two white pawns but also this idea doesn't work because the knight simply moves back with tempo against the bishop bishop to g3 now in this position rook captures on b7 is not only playable but also the best idea Second uh, best move is what Caruana played. The move is rook to h3, attacking the bishop. This move is a trap. So, best answer for black in this position is to play b5, not uh, played by Wesley So, because after b5, there is rook capture, b capture, rook to c3, with, uh, and of course, white will win this pawn with a better structure. Probably this line. Not only will give a strong advantage for white, but will also give white already a winning position. Going back to our game, after rook to h3, attacking the bishop, Wesley so continues with bishop to f2, but the bishop will be trapped. Rook captures on b7, the, the second rook moves to b8, rook captures with check, rook captures with check, knight to e5. We tempo against the pawn, believe it or not, this is the last move of the game, because in this position, Wesley so resigned, and he was right. Let's make some other moves, and we will notice that not only for some moves black will play without this bishop, but white will also be, be able to capture it. After knight to e5, this pawn is under attack. Best move is to defend the pawn, so rook to c8, best move for stockfish, and here comes c3 to, act, to improve the strength of this central pawn structure, and also to activate the king. f6, pushing the knight away, knight to d3 with tempo against the bishop, and now bishop to g1. King to c2, it's 
very difficult to find something to play because the central squares every um, pawn move will be countered because there are two pieces protecting these uh, dark squares so probably rook to e8 with the idea of uh, advancing e5 is the best move but the king is uh, keep moving toward this bishop protecting this e3 square here comes e5 d capture f captures king to e2 and rook to h1 is coming because there is nothing to do also this rook to f8 doesn't work because there is also the knight controlling f2 so last try is to play e4 attacking the knight knight to f4 now rook to b8 but uh, there is b3 and after that nothing can stop rook to h1 winning the bishop only thing that was so can play now is to is a desperado bishop captures only three but of course without a piece the game is lost so an incredible comeback by caruana in some games like this one was so made some fatal mistakes but in other games caruana played really fantastic chess at the end fabiano caruana was also able to win one of the clutch games the one where he had the black pieces with a fantastic slav defense so a terrible day too for wesley so that uh, was already enjoying the taste of a new final against carson but instead caruana it's caruana that will play in the final tomorrow there is day one of the final don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we can't miss the best games of a final carson versus caruana for now thank you very much for watching and see you tomorrow goodbye